So today we're here at Manly uh, interviewing Sophie Terry from Sophie T Art. Uh, so from memory, you're not an art student. You no. worked at GSK, Glasgow Smith Klein in London. Um, Why did you leave that and go into painting? Well, I studied business and my placement at GSK was in my third year. You know when you do like a sandwich kind of year in industry. So I did that and then went back to university to study business for a year graduated and then I um, went traveling to India. It was in India that um, I was running out of money and I remember there was this hostel war with like loads of graffiti on and I asked the manager if I could paint in exchange for a free stay and he said yeah and honestly it was just one of those moments where I was like oh my god I need to do this with my life. And then um, I was due to start a graduate scheme um, in the September and honestly, it took me all of about 24 hours to decide, yeah, that's not for me. And I just gave them an email and I was like, I'm really sorry, I know I had the interview and I got accepted, but I'm not gonna to start. And that's okay, they will literally email back like, yeah, that's fine. fine, we don't care about you. Like, if you haven't even started, whatever. And I was like, oh my God, I've just turned down this like massive opportunity in London. And yeah, and that was it. And then I was officially an artist, I guess. Poor and behind all my friends, so it was hard to start, but okay. yeah. So how did you get the Sophie T name out there? Okay, so what I did, it was all on social media and it always has been to be honest. That painting that I did in India, I took a picture of it and posted it on Facebook. So to my friends and family, if you want a painting, I've got nothing to do, no money, like please order it from me. That was how I kind of got some traction. Mm -hmm. And then when Instagram became a thing, I was pretty early on it. I think in the early days, because it wasn't really a thing yet, it's like TikTok, if you're on it early, then you know, you get loads of followers really quickly. Yeah. So that's something I also regret not bloody getting on TikTok. TikTok. But anyway. <laughs> then I had actually a massive, massive break. It was my friend Jenna, she set up a business called the Gypsy Shrine at the time, it's now known as the Shrine a glitter company, what she was trying to do was get more publicity for herself and um, she messaged me to say, so if like, I know you paint, um, do you want to come and do a, um, a summer of free festivals with me because she used to go and glitter on people mm -hmm. at festivals. Like I was jumping on any single opportunity that I could so it was a yes. I remember we were at this festival, she was like, so do you mind just taking your top off and just putting glitter on your boobs? My dad's gonna absolutely kill me, but absolutely. yeah, whatever. <laughs> um, so I did that, and honestly, that picture just took off. It went, yeah. it went viral, and it was on the Ellen Show. It was on Playboy. If I'm honest, it's a bit of a sleazy story, but it's how I got my first twenty thousand followers, and I got them in about okay. two weeks, and um, I redirected everyone back to my art sales. So that is kind of how I got my my lucky start. What other lessons have you learned along the way that you'd like to share with other artists that are on the same path? Um, the biggest lesson I would say is to just actually go for it. Like stop dwelling and thinking that your ideas aren't good enough. Like you're your, your biggest critic and there shouldn't be a time where you're afraid to put something out there in the world. The piece of advice I always give to other artists or other people trying to make a career out of it um, is that well, my favourite ever quote is, um, one day or day one. There's no point just putting it off because it's all about taking action and like not being afraid. Yeah, that's the most important thing you've got to always realise. And also, just still having the confidence to take risks at every single point. You know, you, you're doing well now, it doesn't, it, it doesn't so guarantee that it's forever. So it's to keep that kind of like beginner start-up mindset even when you're when you are growing. All right, so you started painting animals, then you did the abstract pouring, and yeah. now you're onto these beautiful nudes, uh, all very different styles. You yeah. move through them quite quickly though, why is that? Okay, so the first like actual truthful reason would be I get bored quite quickly. So I like to um, introduce myself to a new subject matter, master it, and then like what's the point, I just, what's the point in doing the same thing over and over again and not developing your style? I have found this more recently because actually during COVID I've been doing smaller runs but doing drops more re more regularly mm -hmm. and um, um, engagement has gone up because we keep changing and keep yeah. reinventing ourselves 
you know, in a short period of time. Mm -hmm. And I've got to paint them all, so I don't want to be doing the same thing over and over again. Yep. So. so what artist inspires you the most? Okay, so the artist that inspires me the most would have to be Tracy Emin. And this is because of one particular interview that I watched about four years ago. And I was just like, you have hit the nail on the head. She said, um, someone was um, interviewing her, it was about her piece, The Bed, and what it was, I'm not sure whether you've heard of it, I'll just give you a quick recap. It was her actual bed with bloody tissues on it, with used condom on it, with um, dirty sheets, like just a disgusting, dirty bed, and it was hers. And um, anyway, it sold at some auction for some ridiculous price. And the interview said, you know, you got so, mu so much criticism for it. Some people saying, you know, that's all that is, is what you actually own. I could have done that. Yeah. And her answer was, yeah, but you didn't. And I just think, oh my God, you could have every mm -hmm. will in the world, but if you don't put it into action, your work doesn't exist. Yeah. And I think she, she was the first person to do it. She might not have been the first person to have the idea, but she was the first person to execute it well. So I think she deserves all the credit. All right, so we did the who. Now, what inspires you? What inspires me? It sounds really silly, but actually like bringing joy to people. Whether it's customers or the nude women that get involved in our campaigns, there's nothing that brings me more fulfillment than actually making people happy through my artwork. And I think it's so important, especially with the news, and it's why this project probably has a special place in my heart, even though I will move on from it, is that everyone has like their own like very personal relationship with their own body. And my biggest inspiration right now definitely comes from, yeah, the joy that I see when people are either interacting with our, we've got this like naked selfie booth in our London store on Carnaby Street. And like these women are going in and like taking these naked photos and being, you know, so empowered, these confident, amazing women. And yeah, just one of the best feelings. So. And guilt free. Oh, completely guilt free. <laughs> so is there going to be a new change of style soon? Oh Maggie, there's always going to be a new change of style soon. However, I'm not going to bloody tell you. You've got to follow me on Instagram and then you'll find out. There you go. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> so you've shown your work in your hometown, London, New York, all these amazing places. No. Why Manly? Why did you open your store up in Manly? Manly, okay, two reasons. The first is the light. I mean, in Australia in general, everything is literally fluorescent. It's amazing, like the sunrises, the sunsets, like it's such a place that I feel very creative because of the nature. And the second reason would be um, because of the people. I just think that everyone's super helpful and super nice here, like. So as you opened this store, you also simultaneously opened your London store on Carnaby Street that you mentioned earlier. Yeah. You did it remotely, how'd you do it? God, my team, honestly, such legends. I have my best friend from home that works for me and my cousin that worked for me and they are just insane. Like, I actually feel like if I went back, I would be getting in the way. Honestly, it's <laughs> got to that point. They just, they know the brand, they care about the brand and it's all I've wanted really to just like build a group of great people that I could work with. So that's a dream. Um, the second way that I was able to open it would definitely be, I recorded right here behind the green screen, a hologram of myself and it was sent to London and it was decoded by these clever people and there was literally a 3D, like real size talking version of me being like, hi everyone, welcome to the show. It's so cringe, but yeah. That you was... never actually got to see it though. I never yourself. got to see it in real life, which is a, which is a real shame. Uh, so part of what we do here at Hum Guide is we like to explore all these different local experiences and things to do. Um, is your shop actually open to the public? Yes, that is an amazing question and it's great for people to know that it is actually. Um, in the week, it is a working studio, so it's where I do all the painting. and. To be honest, it's really weird because people will sit their head in and they're like, oh, are you setting up? Are you, can I come in? Absolutely, yes, come on in. Um, it's welcome to anyone. Like I said before, we wanna make art accessible. You don't even have to have any, any money, like just come in and enjoy it. So it is open. It's open from 10 till four every single day. And um, even on a Saturday and Sunday. On a Saturday and Sunday, I don't paint in here. It's more of like traditional gallery. So if you wanna actually come and not get your feet 
covered in paint. Mm -hmm. Saturday and Sunday, a little insider tip. And um, if you want to see me actually paint, then weekdays. Amazing, we can come and see you paint. Yeah, sure. That's great. Besides dropping by your studio here on the Manly Corso, or off the Corso, um, can you recommend any other places in Manly? Maybe food, Ooh. drink, things to do? Yes. And I'm not only plugging these guys because I completely copied the colour of their building. They've also <laughs> got a pink building. <laughs> We're like the only few places in Manly that have a pink building. Rollers, oh my God, they're like sweet treats are insane. They have this like chocolate croissant, which is amazing. So that would be the number one. And the second one is my next door neighbour, Silo Coffees, because yeah, they do the best coffees. And I'm not just saying that because it's like a two second walk away. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for having us, Sophie. Oh, no worries. Love all your painting, guys. Come down, check it out. It's in Manly. I follow on Instagram, at Art. There you go. <laughs> <laughs>